this 18-minute mini-lecture is an absolute must, and I don't say that very often. Yes, 95% of all my viewers have a misconception, and in these 18 minutes, I put you right back on track. Watch it all the way to the end. Hello, hello, hello. Today is Tuesday, April 2, 2024. Yesterday was April Fool's Day. I want to give you a mini lecture, which is perhaps the most important concept in all of electricity and magnetism. And that is the difference between Faraday's law and Kirchhoff's loop rule, which is generally called KVL. Faraday's law runs our entire economy. Faraday's law, and only because of Faraday's law, not because of KVL, we can convert mechanical energy to electricity. I cover this circuit in my lecture 20. So we have here a battery, a switch, a self-inductor, a resistor, back to the battery. If the self-inductor is an ideal self-inductor, that means it must be made out of superconductive material, it has no ohmic resistance. Zero. Therefore, there can never be any electric field inside these wires. Always the E field must be zero, otherwise the current would become infinitely high. So, let us now go around the closed loop integral of E dot DL from A to B, from B to C back to A. We start at A and we go from A to B. The integral E dot DL from A to B is zero because there is no E field. That's the zero. To go from here to there, there is an E field inside that resistor, and the potential difference between this point and this point, which is the integral of E dot DL, is IR. I can come up to this battery. The E field in the, inside the battery is in this direction. Since I come in from the left, it is minus V. This closed loop integral is not zero. It is minus L d i d t. You can rewrite that equation, that differential equation. I solve it in my lecture 20, and you find that i as a function of time is i max times 1 minus e2 minus r over l times t, and i max is v over r. You can see immediately if t is very, very high, you wait, <laughs> you wait several hours, then this term becomes zero, and therefore the current that is running is V over R, because this term is then zero. I is not changing anymore. So here you see how I would change as a function of time. 
if L is low, then I very quickly reaches the maximum possible. If L is high, if L is high, it takes longer. If you go from A to B, through the self-inductor, the integral A, E dot DL, from A to B through the self-inductor is zero. But now if you go from A to B, not clockwise, but counterclockwise, again going from A to B, it is not zero. Go back to my previous page. It is now V minus RR. In other words, if you go clockwise from A to B, you find zero. If you go counterclockwise from A to B, it is not zero. That is fundamental to Faraday's law. If Kirchhoff loop, loop would hold, if KVL would hold, then it makes no difference whether you go from A to B clockwise or whether you go from A to B counterclockwise. In other words, the integral of E dot DL depends on the path. In this case, KVL does not hold, because then the integral of E dot DL is zero, no matter in what direction you go. And it is not zero, it is minus L D I D T. Faraday's law is one of Maxwell's four equations, for a good reason, because Faraday's law always works. KVL is not one of Maxwell's equations because it sometimes works. Faraday's law always works. Does it mean that you can do away with KVL? Yes, of course. You never need KVL if you always use Faraday's law then you cover always the right physics, even in the case that the closed loop integral is zero, in which case KVL would have worked. But Faraday's law always works, also in cases where KVL works. So, we now have the issue that potential difference, which is the integral of E dot DL from one point to another, is no longer defined. It depends on the path. With KVL, it does not depend on the path. Thus, KVL only works sometimes, but Faraday's law always works. Now, look what I'm going to do. It's the same circuit, but I now attach a voltmeter from this point A to this point B. And I go in this loop around and I apply Faraday's law. Faraday's law can be applied to any closed loop, so also to this one. If you go from A to B, it's zero, because there is no electric field in the self-inductor. So the closed loop integral 
e dot dl going around is minus l di dt. In other words, the voltmeter that I attach there will read this value V1, I call that V1, equals minus L D I D T. Because the closed loop integral around must be minus L D I D T. So you now see that if you attach a voltmeter, that you measure the potential difference between this point and that point through this routing, which is not zero, but through this routing, it is zero. So you see again that potential difference is ill-defined. The value of E dot DL from A to B depends on the path. If you go this way, it's zero. If you go this way, it is not zero. Watch to a stunning demo at the end of lecture 16. I have point A and point B. And there is more to it, of course, but I attach from A to B a voltmeter V1 on the left side and a voltmeter V2 on the right side. They are both attached to exactly the same two points. And in that lecture I show that the difference in that value of the integral E dot DL is a factor of 10. One is 10 times higher than the other, and the polarity is also reversed. Imagine, so if you go from here to here, you find a positive value, but then you go from here to here, you find a negative value. That's the magic of Faraday's law. The induced EMF is a non-conservative E-field. VA minus VB depends on the path, in other words, on the routing. KVL does not work with non-conservative E-fields. Faraday's law always works. Faraday's law runs our entire economy. It can convert mechanical energy into electricity, which KVL cannot. So waterfalls, wa waterfalls can rotate objects, and the wind can rotate objects, either magnets around coils or coils around magnets. It's called an electric generator. Without Faraday's law, we would be back to the times 1800 and earlier. Your house would be lit with candles or maybe with oil lamps. You would have no refrigerator no radio, no dryer, no washing machine, not even an electric toothbrush. <laughs> I have here such an electric generator. When I pump this, the light goes on because of Faraday's law. Whether I rotate inside here the magnet around coils or I rotate coils around magnets, that's irrelevant. Either way, 
I don't know which one it is here. But that is an electric generator. I have here a radio. And the radio needs a battery. The battery, or I should say the electricity, is generated by an electric generator. And that's this. Can you hear the radio? So I'm charging up the battery. Now I will stop rotating. Now the radio is dead because there's not enough electricity anymore in the battery. That's an example of Faraday's law. Think about all the things in your house. <laughs> Almost everything in your house is driven by electricity. Your vacuum cleaner, the washing machine, the dryer, the refrigerator, airplanes would not exist without Faraday's law. Internet would not exist without Faraday's law. We would never have been able to land on the moon without Faraday's law. I go one step further. You and I could not even exist. Human life could not even exist without Faraday's law. The hell is KVL. Who needs it? You don't. But there's nothing wrong with using it when it can be used. Most of you are confused Apply KVL when it cannot be used, and then, of course, <laughs> then what you're doing is other nonsense.